hello friends hope you all enjoyed classes and now we shall continue with the part on uh, ajaz ahmed's views on indian literary cultures okay and let us know something about uh, ajaz ahmed and uh, particularly on uh, indian literary cultures okay uh, he was born in 1932 in the state of uttar pradesh in india and uh, he is uh, a marxist philosopher a literary theorist and political commentator and he is currently the uh, he was uh, the cook uh, chancellor's professor of at the uc irwin school of uh, humanities department of comparative literature and along with his parents ajaz ahmed migrated to pakistan during partition okay and he worked in various universities in the us and canada before joining uh, uc irwin in 2017 okay and he was uh, a professorial fellow at the center of contemporary studies uh, nehru memorial museum and uh, library in new delhi and he was a visiting professor of uh, uh, political science at uh, york university toronto okay and he also works as an editorial consultant with the indian news magazine frontline and as a senior news uh, analyst for the indian website that is news click okay and uh, coming to this uh, uh, text that is there okay in theory classes nations and literatures this is the book his book okay and uh, this book contains uh, uh, his uh, various uh, speeches presented at the universities and uh, institutions and they are improvised and they are brought in here in this book form okay so i am at primarily discusses the role of theory and uh, theorists in the movement against uh, colonialism and uh, imperialism okay and this in turn leads to uh, leads uh, jameson to make uh, hasty and untenable generalizations about how uh, all the third world literature would necessarily function as a national allegory that according to jameson works as a resistance to a system of uh, global post modernism okay it is bit difficult to understand but uh, you have to have the text of this and you have to read and understand that okay and when you read <coughs> if you do not understand you can come to me and then we can discuss that text, okay and further see there what he brings in uh, on indian literary cultures we will discuss that okay so amos argument against uh, those who uphold post structuralism and post modernist conceptions of material history revolves around the fact that very little has been accomplished since the advent of uh, this brand of uh, post colonial inquiry okay uh, the book contains this in theory uh, and especially polemical critic of frederick jameson's argument in third world literature in the era of multinational capitalism uh, where ahmed attacks uh, jameson on the grounds that jameson's argument is uh, insufficiently theorized in its use of terms like third world especially which appears to be defined purely in terms of its experience of colonialism okay so ahmed in this book <coughs> expresses his chagrin at how his critique of jameson has been appropriated by post colonial scholars as an attack on marxism while ahmed contends that he takes issue with jameson simply because his use of marxism in the essay on third world literature is not rigorous enough so as i have told you in the beginning that he is a marxist this art as a zaman okay the book also contains a lengthy critique of edward said's orientalism uh, which ahmed argues uh, uh, reproduces the very liberal humanist tradition that it seeks to undermine in its selection of western colonized texts in his book orientalism that are critiqued for their orientalism as they are uh, this upholds the idea that western culture is represented in its entirety through those very texts like uh, orientalism so uh, furthermore he asserts as as ahmed asserts that by tracing orientalist thought all the way back to ancient greece it becomes unclear in sides uh, work whether orientalism is a product of colonialism or whether colonialism is the product of uh, orientalism 
in fact uh, a product of uh, orientalism okay so setting himself against the growing tendency to homogenize the third world uh, literature and cultures Isaac Ahmed has produced a, spirit, a spirited critique of the major theoretical statements on colonial discourse and post colonialism dismantling many of the common places and conceits that dominate contemporary cultural criticism okay uh, with lengthy considerations of uh, among others frederick jameson edward said and the subaltern studies group in theory this book his book also contains brilliant analysis of the concept of indian literature especially indian literature of the genealogy of the term third world he discusses and of the conditions under which so called colonial discourse theory emerged in metropolitan intellectual circles okay so this is a highly influential essay that is indian literature notes towards the definition of a category this is a, a very highly influential essay and it was published as a chapter in his seminal book in the theory i told you the seminal book theory okay and uh, many of his essays published in this book are notably uh, jameson's rhetoric of uh, otherness and uh, the national allegory and salman rushdie's uh, uh, shame uh, post modern migrancy and the representation of uh, women and orientalism and after that says uh, ambivalence and uh, uh, metropolitan location in the work of edward said uh, were first published in various reputed journals they were first published in the reputed journals and afterwards independently they published them in book form okay some of the chapters in this book of ahmed as he himself admits in his uh, 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 beginning of the book that uh, indian literature this this uh, essay also is uh, uh, based on Uh, his seminars presented at uh, uh, Delhi University and uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University in the year 1988. Okay, and uh, Ahmed's essay is concerned with uh, several issues of importance pertaining to the unwieldy category of Indian literature. That Indian literature is spread in almost uh, all languages uh, that are spoken here in India. Okay, and they are written and published in almost all Indian languages. then what category we should put them all together in that is the challenge here so he discusses theoretical and institutional problems encountered while talking of a separate entity as uh, such as indian literature that is the reason okay so the essay is written from a purely marxist perspective as is typical of his uh, other uh, writings too constantly making a case for reading texts in their materiality and resisting their appropriation by dominant and uh, hegemonic discourses okay several methodologies are used to be effectively followed to define uh, the scope and characteristics of what could be authentically termed as indian literature okay so this essay is uh, uh, field defining for several reasons not to mention the obvious implications that follow uh from its uh, very suggestive title uh, 40 pages and 9 uh, sections are there in this essay uh, the essay addresses the central problem of uh, defining indian literature given its uh, uneven historiography the multilingual milieu of uh, indian culture the mixed and sometimes fuzzy origins of various indian literary genres and lastly the status of english as a language in india this is what is discussed in this essay and these questions are complex and the answers to them are by no means direct okay uh, with this brief introduction we'll end here and further we'll discuss in the next class thank you